right, guys, welcome back. Uh, this time we're coming at you with the recap from Central Rock Gym, or CRG, Chelsea's uh, end of the line second uh, annual competition. This is the second time they rocked it. Uh, and like, once again, they've uh, done a great job. Uh, of course, welcome back my man, Tyler. And I brought a even more special guest this time around. We have Sienna Perez. Uh, as an understatement, Hi. she is the winner of the CRG uh, end of the line uh, competition and so much more. So what's up, Sienna? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Ah, my so excited pleasure. to be here on Beta Breakers. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. Finally having, uh, you know, first of all, this is actually a monumental moment. First female uh, to do a recap, which I'm really excited about. And I, what better female than Sienna Perez? I've been a big fan of Sienna for a very long time. For those who don't know, I, I've been following her longer than, like, you know, from the beginning uh, of her um, climbing career. I was actually at your very first Appreciate finals. It. Right? Your very first finals. I was yeah. there for that. Uh -huh. Found the footage. I remember I that. Found, yes. I found the climb I was talking about. So I'm going to throw that out there. This is the climb that I saw Sienna climbing on in the very beginning of the competition. And like completely blew my mind. I was like, she was about two feet tall. And I was like, if this girl grows like three more inches, she's going to be phenomenal. She, of course, grew way more than that. And she is way more than exceeded um, our expectations. But, you know, not getting off track too much. <laughs> Let's talk about the actual competition. Uh, and so when we talk about the competition from a citizen standpoint, uh, I, I mean, I love C uh, all of CRG's competitions. It's amazing that um, their gyms don't do more competitions. Their setting team is fantastic. Uh, shout out to Ryan Smith, who just crushes it uh, when you talk about setting. Uh, I climbed really well, but of course, being plagued by running the live stream and everything around it, I didn't get as much time on the boulders. But even in a small amount of time compared to last season when I was still um, like recovering from a lot of old people stuff, um, and it, like now that Tyler's really got me really into shape, I did considerably better than I did last um, last season. Was really excited for that, um, and just looking forward to, to more comps coming down the road. Tyler's, I'm really excited. So thank you so much again, Tyler, for all that. And if you guys don't know or haven't checked Tyler out, definitely check Tyler out. Leave all the links in the description for some amazing coaching and really getting some good programs to get you stronger. Um, but enough about me. Enough about the citizens stuff. Let's talk about open, right? And then we'll talk about, um, we'll start with qualifiers. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, I have no video footage of Sienna qualifying. We said, oh, like, as our typical fashion, we show up about an hour into the qualifying round. Uh, and then about an hour into the qualifying round, Sienna was done. She was already done, <laughs> backed up and like left. Yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, so, which is, I mean, just a testament to how strong you are and how strong you've been getting over, over the years. Uh, so we have no qualifying footage, but of course we have a, amazing footage of you, uh, in the finals. But so just from a qualifying standpoint, I didn't get to see the numbers, uh, for like how many attempts you took or like, I mean, like what was your, your favorite climbs and, and overall, like how did you feel the qualifying round, uh, went uh -huh. for you? So there were six boulders. Usually there's like eight, eight. or ten. You, um, they weren't at too many this time, but they were all really fun and all the sets were like top notch. There were no give me's or like warm ups, and each climb had like its own special move or like crux move. So I enjoyed every single climb. Um, I flashed a few of them, but a bunch of them took me like two or three attempts. Probably took me like thirteen attempts to get the six tops. And my favorite climb was probably this purple climb it was like a slabby climb and it was like really technical it was definitely compy so i loved it and you had to go really slow in the beginning but to get to the zone hold i think it was like a really committing move to a really tiny jib and i just love that the something that i talk a lot about when we talk about the uh like the local citizens comps is are they are the setters challenging a variety of styles because i think especially at the open level what we see is a lot of like the World Cup style where it's, uh, you know, very dynamic, very uncertain or like very techie slab on zero holds. Like, mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel the variety of style was in the open round? Like, did you did did your biceps get pumped at any point or yeah. like just no, I found the toes? They had they had like every single style. They had two slab climbs. 
Um, one of them had like a little dynamic move in it, and the other one was like more of a slow climb. So that was perfect. And then they also had a climb with a little coordination move where he had to swing and then do like a little like that. that. Um, it was this white climb, so that was cool. And then there were two really powerful overhang climbs. One of them had like a rose move, a campus rose move. So that was perfect for climbers like Sabrina, who loves doing those moves because she's really strong at hanging with one arm. Um, yeah, she loved that climb for sure. And I had fun trying it too. Um, didn't do it as smooth as her, but I was able to get through it. So that was pretty cool to try. And there was another overhanging climb, really shouldery. So definitely tested all our strengths. Nice. Sweet. Love to hear that. Um, the, I also, you know, care a lot about the citizens round and making sure that there's like equal value placed on all the styles. So, uh, mm -hmm. from what Basim was saying, it sounds like there's a good, pretty good spread. And, uh, based on what the competition was last year, there was a good spread there as well. So, um, yeah. it's great to hear. Yeah. Setters at CRG are great. Yeah. yeah. No, I was gonna say there was, a, I, I didn't really get into that as much from a citizens. Um, there was a great spread, uh, and it was very, I mean, they did three rounds and it was actually very quiet for the first two rounds. I mean, everyone from a citizen standpoint packed into the third round, which is unfortunately where I fell into as well. Uh, if I showed up in the morning, I probably would have definitely would have had way more time um, to get on. Uh, there was one really good slap that they had, uh, the purple one that just literally, you would have thought you were staying on a line for like Magic Mountain. It was just like this long queue it was a really slow slap and was really popular. It was like a 750 in scoring wise. Um, but like people who spent considerable time, probably like a minute or two on that climb. Uh, otherwise, everywhere else, I mean, you got off, you chalked up, you looked up, and you were ready to go again. I do appreciate that for for their comps. Nice and spread out, um, not overpacked. Uh, it's, you know, good stuff, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure, especially in the morning yeah. session. You could get on as many times as you wanted. It wasn't crowded at all. So I love that idea of three sessions that they had there. Yeah, yeah for sure. And it was uh, qualifiers yeah. three were... Three sessions, uh, five categories. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Right, <laughs> five categories. Yeah. Yeah. I've we'll been, be advocating yeah. for that until until it happens, right? <laughs> until it happens, yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Cool. Um, so, um, so I obviously done in the first round in like twenty five minutes, as is tradition with people who uh, end up on the podium. Um, the you know prepping for for finals, like huge names, obviously as is tradition in the Northeast at this point, like there's no, there's no finals that goes on in the New York area that you can, like anybody can just walk into, right? Like there's no names that people don't recognize, but um, yeah, the, obviously you've been climbing with a lot of the, the girls that you compete against for a long time. Is there like the, do you, does the squad have like any fun games you guys do in ISO or anything like that? Um. We don't typically play games in ISO. We're kind of just all like chatting, warming up, having a good time back there. Sometimes we do play add-on though, so that's fun, for sure. Okay. It's hard to get cool. people to join, everyone to join in though, because everyone's doing their own thing. Everyone's focused on the comp. <laughs> I've but always said the worst part people. of comps. Yeah, the worst part of yeah. comps is that like that's where you see all your friends, and then you like don't get yeah. to actually spend all that time with them. Yeah, but that's cool. Everyone's always really nervous back there, and like we know that whenever people come back from trying the climb everyone always is trying to like ask them for little hints on the beta and stuff but we can't say yeah. so yeah. it's funny how that goes yeah, yeah. It's, it's a much more casual uh, environment than what you've been probably yeah. exposed to over the last couple of, of months right you're coming back off yeah, of a sure. world tour uh, yeah i just came back from china yeah that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I was gonna, I was gonna wait until we finished with the CRG comp, but <laughs> like we're, we're already here. Second. I was like, just like just oh, okay. thinking yeah. about all right, it. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll come back. We'll come yeah. back around to that. Uh, yeah. So Sienna's mm -hmm. been doing a lot, and we'll definitely definitely get into that. Um, yeah, it's fun. So it's fun. You were saying like what people are doing in ISO and trying to conserve energy or not. I, I don't know if you guys saw just like as a side, like Austin Austin Hoyt after he qualified, literally hits the D, uh, not the, it was a tension board or what was it? Whatever. The boards, I think the it was the board there, board. It starts working V10 projects like literally after qualifiers because he's got nothing to do. And I'm like, what, what are really? you doing? You're fucking saving energy. <laughs> you sent like five, yeah. five projects. Yeah, I don't do that. I save my energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Austin's oh. a machine. I've climbed yeah. with him a couple of times and the dude does not rest and climbs for like six hours. I don't understand. How, just yeah. like skin alone. It's a disaster. Yeah, but, yeah I've but, seen Dimitri do that a bunch of times too. Like... I'll just walk back there to the tension board and he'll just be on their project thing. Yeah. It's funny. 
That's wild to me, yeah. at least. That's crazy. I'm glad to hear yeah. that you are also <laughs> disgusted by that behavior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so uh, getting should we in, get into finals a bit? Yes, getting into finals. And then for those of you who don't know, um, like if, if Tyler and I are crossing over with our uh, dialogue, Tyler's in Europe right now. So there's a little bit of a delay between... <laughs> When I start speaking, we start speaking, so that might cause a little confusion. So, but we're working it out. We're working it out. Uh, but yes, getting into finals uh, for sure. Um, so, Mike, actually, this is a good question. I've always wanted to ask uh, a, a finalist. Uh, typically, or traditionally, you see there are usually four final boulders. Uh, like you saw, everyone saw the Olympics. Yeah. Like for those who aren't familiar, um, but a couple of organizations do only three finals boulders and uh, CRG is one of them. Like, how do you feel about just only having three finals boulders, uh, you know, in, in a competition? Like, does that kind of mess with your psyche or you're just like, go at it? I mean, sometimes it can be more nerve wracking because there's less opportunities to get those points. So it all comes down to three boulders. So each and every attempt matters more. So we're always hoping that these three boulders, if there are only three, that they're all difficult. And they're all challenging for everyone because we don't want to come down to attempts. Right. Yeah. And actually, mm -hmm. the Boulder three finals three for females. There was no top on that yeah. one. Yeah. It was like yeah, no top on that one. a race to zone for that one. Uh, who, uh -huh. and, and that's what. It, and so you got two tops and and then zone on three, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, zone on three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I definitely want to go back and try that one. Yeah, you did. A couple after of you the beta, going, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going back yeah. at it. And I was then, pretty tired, though, after I climbed. So jumping on there, I wasn't able to give my best goes. But, and then we yeah. got called off the wall. But definitely yeah. want to go back there. It got me excited, for sure. Yeah, and I, and I, I love that. Like, I, I see that a lot with a lot of the, like, you especially, at the end of finals, you know, after you've already crushed everything, which is a typical thing you'll do, you'll then go and then go at the men's finals boulder. So like, all right, let's go to the... And oh, like, yeah, I didn't get to do that this time. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, I need to get this one first, and then we're going to move on. Um, but it's really yeah. cool to see see people do that. I, I, I've, you know, I've had a couple of times when you've done that. I've seen um, another, uh, Chloe is another person who does it. Like, and all, and all the, also, all of your um, method crew, you, you all do that. But, like, particularly you, like, no matter what, mm -hmm. you're like, I'm moving on. Not done here yet, but it was good to see mm -hmm. a boulder challenge yeah. you so much that you couldn't move past it and, and then actually had to, you know, work on that actually at the end. It was a really boulder. Mm -hmm. You probably only gave it, what, two or three attempts, Yeah, it I definitely think? was. Yeah. yeah, probably like three or maybe even four. I okay. think I shouldn't have jumped on at like 10 seconds. I should have waited till the zero mark and then, because there's plus time. So I would have right. been able to keep climbing, and gotten a little bit more rest. Yeah, you didn't get to see what um, Olivia Long did to, on um, because she yeah. jumped on, on the 10 second and then she actually busted out a bat, a bat hang to rest. Um, bat after hang? She took, oh, that's like, smart. Off and hopped yeah. on and did the bat hang on, on the on the start hold to give a little bit of rest. She, I mean, mm -hmm. of course, she still didn't get the top, but that was like, you know, strategy 101. And uh, I was like, you know, had yeah, a that's, couple that's of... Yeah, that's perfect. It's always entertaining for the crowd, for sure. Oh, yeah, the crowd loved it. You know, yeah, it was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tyler, what do you, I'll let you get in. I know you're, you're, you're back behind us a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to play along with the with the delay a little bit, so I'm keeping it stuff. But um, yeah, Sienna, you're obviously somebody who's been in a lot of final situations. Mm -hmm. The like, you know, hearing that having three boulders instead of four maybe puts a little bit more pressure. I think uh, people at home, people watching, especially like you know, a lot of climbers who look up to the people that we have on the show, uh, probably feel those same nerves. I'm curious if you have a tip for people out there. Um, when they're about to pull on the wall, whether it's like first climb of the day or in a final situation, like, do you have a go-to, like, get yourself in the right headspace strategy that you use? Yeah, first go, best go, for sure. Like, <laughs> even if you don't, even if you're confused, you don't know what to do, you got to choose something, you got to commit to it, because then that's how you learn. And then your next attempt, you'll be able to try something else if that didn't work, or you can just commit harder. I love that the answer is basically just grip it and rip it. That's yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> cool. Uh, of the of the three boulders, were there any that like during exam time or anything you looked at and you were like, I I wish this was different, or are you somebody who just like takes on every challenge? 
Um, I think I'm ready for everything mostly, except when I'm conf- sometimes I'm confused when I'm previewing the routes and I'm like, that kind of stresses me out. And when I'm in ISO, I just keep thinking about that one climb, um, trying to read the route in my head. But yeah, and then we try, try to like ask each other, what do you think you're going to do when you get up there? So that can be kind of stressful when we're confused when we're route previewing. This did happen on climb number two. None of us were really yeah. sure about the beta at the start because there were like a bunch of volumes lined up everywhere. It's usually those crazy volume climbs that get us the most confused because you can go multiple directions, stuff like that. Your, your method, though, like method, I mean, yeah, they method. Are yeah we're kind of used to that. Volumes, just random volumes. You're like, okay, I got to figure this out. Um, and I think that's a, a huge testament to, to their setting team and understanding the comp format. Uh, but yeah, it was interesting uh-huh. to see a couple of you navigate the start of that differently. Um, and then like when it came to just standing up and getting to the left onto, that was the the crux. And, and of course, the leap of faith or the, uh, the, the lean of faith to, to get the match, um, you know, which mm-hmm. you can see you just felt very at home on that. You know, you and I think Sabine yeah. as well. Yeah, Sabine thing. too. Yeah, yeah. Just method all the way, right? <laughs> just... Show, show yeah. us all that. Yeah, that was, that was really, um, really great to see yeah, that. Yeah, the setup method probably helped us feel comfortable on that climb. For, for sure. sure. I trust like my feet pretty well in those volumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, my first experience at method was, like, what, where, are the, where are the holds? <laughs> you, know? you know, just, like, where are yeah. the holds? Just use volumes. And I was like, ah, oh, that was, you know, really. Yeah, when I first started going to method, it was a lot different than it is now. Like, I was struggling on the V4s, V5s. I was not used to the style at all. Yeah. But now, yeah. pretty used to it. Doing red yeah. tags, it's all good. Very cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing the layers. So just here. quick. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Quick uh, sh- just rundown of who uh, was in finals. Uh, for the men, we had Demetrius Grap- Grapsis, Robbie McGonigal, Lucas Conagher, who is a name that I vaguely recognized but haven't seen him much in these northeast finals uh josh platko great to see him back back at it uh quincy catone and austin hoyt and then on the female side we had autumn lloyd olivia long sabrina levine francesca hines suvine park and sienna perez Um, actually so there's a correction uh, obviously oh correct oh there's a correction autumn did not show up right and then someone else had to fill in for her no Mm -hmm. Yes. Who, who was oh, the and her per- name is Tessa. Tessa, thank you. Was yeah. it Tessa Brooks? Um, I don't know her last name, but her first name is Tessa. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it was. Uh, well, yeah, my European reporting isn't great. Uh. <laughs> no, it's fine. Like it was so. Just kind of getting into, and I apologize to all of my uh, strong athletes out there. So one of the enhancements we were looking to add to the uh, live stream. Well, two enhancements. One was the on-screen clock or on-screen timer, which was like super fantastic. It actually, you know, problem. Uh, and then also headshots of the athletes with their names, um, just to kind of give it you know, a, a more polished feel. And so we did all the headshots and everything, but like Autumn didn't show up and didn't show up and didn't show up. Uh, and then Tessa showed uh, finally, but by the time like all that happened, I couldn't get her in and everything started. Uh, so we just didn't, I didn't want to have one athlete without a headshot. And also like I didn't have her full name or whatever. So I was, I nixed the names all together. Um, but uh, going forward, we'll, we'll, we'll actually have that issue resolved. But so that's, um, one of the, the the things that was it, it actually caused a little bit of confusion for a lot of people. Um, so I just wanted to, to kind of clear that up to make sure. Um, and shout out to Tessa for coming in just last second and and uh, hopping on and, and giving her all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's only I think fifteen too, and I was actually the oldest in this competition for the first time. <laughs> That was pretty was crazy. crazy. It was only by one day though, because Sabrina's born the day after me. So by one day, I was the oldest <laughs> in this competition. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And it sneaks up on you quick. You go from be always being like the youngest person there to all of a sudden you're like, what, what are all these babies doing in ISO? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that she said that she's only 15 because how old were you in that, that Island Rock final? That was 2019, right? So. Oh, yeah. I was I was like 12. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, a baby, you know, for sure. You were, you were like literally a baby on the wall yeah. and it was crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of funny when you have Sienna saying she was she was only fourteen or <laughs> fifteen, I think. <laughs> I was like, uh, weren't you like twelve? Yeah, that's crazy. Cool. 
Um, but yeah, the what we ended up with on the podium in fourth place, we had Demetrios and Olivia Long. Shout out both two Beta Breakers athletes. Uh, okay. In third place, we had Quentin Catone and Francesca Hine, both absolute powerhouses. Second place, we had my boy, Austin Hoyt. Um, hope somebody was there to heckle him while I wasn't there. Um, and then second place for the women, we had Suveen Park. And then in first place, we had Josh Placco. It's great to see him back on the podium. And then uh, somebody named Saina. Sa- Sa- Um, obviously Sienna Perez Um, and so uh, a stacked finals as always Um, it's I I feel like I say this in every review video but the amount of talent the depth of talent that we have in these like northeast like throwaway local comps that people think of as a very casual thing like the everybody who's in these finals or at least like people who are on the podium like are you know, very high level nationals competitors, people competing at youth worlds, people who are going to be competing in world cup soon. Like, you know, there's no, there's no easy podium spots anymore. Right. Like the Sienna, mm-hmm. like when you were 12, right. Like <laughs> they think about the level of competition then yeah. versus now, like, do you think 12 year old yeah, you no. is, I don't think so. Like my sister, she's 14 and she's pretty good. Like definitely better than I was when I was 12, but she hasn't seen herself in an open finals yet. Yeah. She's she a beast. It's it? coming soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely coming soon. Yeah. Was she was she going for? Because I know she's been dominating advanced uh, last. I'm saying last season, but yeah, yeah, she gets first in advanced. I think she's gone for open a few times, but okay. still advanced. Okay. So definitely yeah. this can't... year, definitely she'll switch to open for sure. Good. You can't be in finals if yeah. you're not in open. That's what I keep telling yeah. my team kids. Like, gotta get in there. Get those uh-huh. reps. Yeah, and then yeah, just even getting in there and trying, and uh, and you know, not ex- you know, having the expectation to, to get into finals in you know, round one. I I know for um, both two of our sponsored athletes last year, Sam Lerner Dreamer, who is in college now, so we won't be seeing much of him here on the East Coast, um, and, and Dimitri, they their goal last year was to just make a finals all of last year for Dark Horse, mm-hmm. as well as. Um, the Eclipse Cup, AK movement, Northeast. And they both got that goal eventually, <laughs> you know? And so it wasn't, it wasn't immediate. It was literally, I did, Dimitri had the last second, of, no, it might've been the last comp of the season for, for the Eclipse Cup to finally get that. But, you know, you gotta be in it to win. You can't get in finals if you're, if you're actually not in, in open and trying to qualify. So keep grinding and get out of my yeah. category so I can actually get some some prizes <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely better to challenge yourself and underestimate yourself there you go yeah looking at the podium i already talked about how talented everybody is but um i guess like i would love to hear about your experience in china and, and what youth worlds was like this time around was, mm-hmm. th- was this your first youth worlds this is actually my fourth consecutive youth worlds <laughs> that's what i yeah. thought but i wanted to double yeah. check yeah um, so i know this year was china last year was korea where korea. were the other two at um, it was Dallas, Texas, and then my first one was in Russia. So pretty insane yeah, that I got Dallas, to visit all so these exotic. countries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dallas. Um, but going to Russia, Korea, China, like crazy how climate gave me these opportunities to visit these countries. Like probably wouldn't have gone to these countries if it weren't for the sport. Super, super wild. That's world. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you had like? It, I guess maybe I'll narrow it down to like. Uh, the facilities that you've been in for each of them has one of them stood out as like being a like I'm gonna say like higher level experience than the others. Oh, I think the China one had definitely the best venue for sure. Um, Dallas was inside a bouldering gym, so it wasn't like a stadium. Uh, Russia was pretty cool too. Russia was a great experience for my first world. It was also a stadium, um, but China was like really cool. It had a whole glass ceiling, um, perfect speed wall like really high lead wall and then the boulder walls were like right on the side like everything was right next to each other so you could really see everything see every discipline um korea that was pretty crazy that it was outdoors and the weather was not good when we were competing it was raining like crazy um and it was super humid so they actually had to cover the walls with these tarps and like spectators were closed out so that was a crazy experience Um. and Definitely needed a lot of chalk, fans, liquid chalk especially, because hands were slippery, holds were slippery. Um, that was a fight, for sure. And my dad was pretty disappointed that he couldn't watch. 
since the tarps were up because it's the world championships. He's my biggest cheerleader. Of course, he wants to watch. But he was able to like peek his head through some tarps, although he was getting yelled at. It was kind of funny. Yeah, I would always <laughs> look back to see his head peeking through, cheering me on, and then they would just push him out every time for every attempt. It was funny. He's not gonna go all oh, the way. Man. It's <laughs> crazy to hear. Yeah, that was the craziest world yeah. experience. This one was, ran much more smoothly for sure in China. That's awesome. I mean, it, like we talk about this all the time here, but the Beta Breakers live streams, like, are the way that a lot of like family get to see their, like, yes, their sure. uh, family compete. And like the, I've always felt like the Youth Worlds coverage has been really lacking. Like, you know, yeah. even World Cups, like, there's a live stream now. Most of the time, sometimes it's hard to see. Like, it's really hard to follow what's going on in like a youth finals or a youth worlds or like even youth nationals is like kind of hard to see. Although there was really solid live streaming this year. I'll give it to USA climbing. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the, you were at youth nationals this year in salt Lake and climbing outside the whole time. Um, the, how does that experience stack up compared to like Korea or China or some of the other, Oh, that was uh, nothing. That was nothing. <laughs> like people would be complaining about the heat, but I didn't really feel anything. I mean, I only, I didn't climb on the lead wall as much. Just, I think it was just two days where I climbed on the lead wall and the bouldering wall was inside, but it definitely was pretty hot and humid in there, but it didn't bother me compared to the Korea Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by how bad it wasn't based yeah. on like how hot it's it fine. was. It didn't feel a hundred degrees, yeah. even though it was. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely grateful for the Beta Breakers live stream because um, my dad is in L.A. right now, so he wasn't able to watch this competition, but he could watch it through the live stream, and he was definitely excited about that. Cool. Nice. It's just doing, doing what I can, you know. And it's, uh, the whole, <laughs> yeah. that's like, it's, it's funny because, you know, just kind of getting into the, you know, how it all kind of manifested is, you know, I started just doing videos, right, um, and then posting them later. And, mm -hmm. It was always the finals climbers, you know, you, Austin, and Adam would always tell me like, oh, my dad or whatever parent can check it out later on. And I was like, well, I can just do this live. And it was really, I was inspired by all of you strong climbers to, to really make this happen uh, for your families. Mm -hmm. you know, and of course, for everyone else as well. But yeah, uh, thank you. it was really just a need that, that needed to be there, you know, and yes, it's my mm -hmm. pleasure. <laughs> to help, yeah, to help and you were with. showing me the other day how you even started you even have footage from my first open competition at Island Rock. Yeah. But it wasn't live at that time, I don't think, right? No, it wasn't. It's crazy live. how no. you started even back then. So you still have yeah. videos of me from when I was when I was twelve. You have all that footage. Literally still have all that footage. It was it was like so that that was like a moment for me too, like to to see, you know, I I mean I knew climbing and climbers were strong, but to see like you come through and then you know just make finals and then also like that was when i first met um adeline wright as well and i got introduced to her and then mm -hmm. like yeah. the, to kind of like watch that you know um was it was actually really like a really cool moment a defining moment for me uh in, in climbing which was uh really was really cool uh and then just to watch both you know both of you kind of grow in your own ways so and you just kept getting stronger as a climber and Addy just just being a huge advocate for uh, you know just the climbing in general and then just taking on route setting. We had a, a beautiful moment and actually in the competition where Addy's brother competed, her little brother, the kid Jack London is his name, uh, and like to see him climbing on a route that she set and then not sending it, which actually is kind of you know like really cool to see like that that little you know. Uh, brother sister moment which is um was that his first competition his very first competition and he is strong i was like how is this your first competition coming out and just crushing it like that um but yeah it was his first comp um uh -huh. shout out to, to london for coming out and just like tearing it up i mean it was really really cool to, to see that and you know yeah. so Addy's mom and all kinds of just really really cool moments um at the at crg cop yeah uh -huh. yeah and it was so nice meeting Addy's mom too she said it was her first the first competition that she's ever watched live and she loved the atmosphere loved the vibes yeah. so it's cool yeah. how climbing it's definitely a fun sport to watch it is for people who don't know it yes I, I i always say that like you need to check it out so um like even i don't know if you guys noticed well tyler you didn't notice because you weren't there um but i had a, a new cameraman which is actually a, a friend of of and it's a friend of the family shout out to flynn for manning the camera uh, he's not a climber, uh, but he's really good behind the camera and he's crushing it. 
And then he was like, at the end of the competition, he was like, that was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. You know, just like the energy, like all, he just, everyone who has experienced it for the first time, they, I mean, they, they get hooked. Uh, just even from a spectator standpoint. Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, of course, now has appreciation for climbing because he tried, you know, climbing the, the slab wall where everyone was warming up for the first time. Uh, and he um, didn't get past what he called the version three. Um, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> the the V threes. He's like the version three. I couldn't get so uh, lot to learn, but he does have an amazing appreciation yeah. uh, for the sport now, just like you know Annie's mom and, and others out there as well. Yeah, doesn't take lot. Yeah, it's definitely much. cool to see non climbers' reactions to the sport. Like I probably want to bring my friends to a competition sometime and see how they react. It'd be cool. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand it, but when you watch it, it's definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, and then the second Adam Shahar like, had some of them, his like high school friends at feats last year. Oh, wow. Uh, which is super funny to watch. Like, three, Adam Shahar had three okay. clones of himself just like standing in the <laughs> crowd. These three Jersey boys coming through, uh, <laughs> which was like really cool to see his friends come through. I, I, I assume that they weren't climbers. Um, but uh, it, it's fun to watch people experience it for the first time. Even my mom will come watch finals at Valhalla every year because I MC. She's there to like watch me scream into a microphone, but then is like impressed with what goes on. Aside from that, yeah, mm -hmm. no, for sure, it it really is uh, quite the spectacle. I'm just hoping the sport continues to grow, right, uh, and people start to appreciate it, uh, you know, for the sport that it is. So, can I jump yeah. in, Sienna, and ask uh, what is kind of next on the docket for you? Like, obviously, you just got back from China. You're already in another conflict. Do you get some some rest here in the year, or is it just on to the next thing for you? Pretty much on to the next thing. I mean, the season's always going. In October, I have Open Nationals. So got to keep training for that. Um, I was actually really proud of myself for making Worlds this year because it was definitely the hardest year to do so for me since I was also in a junior in high school. So definitely a lot on my plate. And I actually wasn't able to show up to a lot of these open competitions last year. Like I was missing from most of them. I don't know if you noticed. I did. Um, so it was definitely <laughs> fun to be back at this one. I feel like I haven't been in, at one. I haven't been at one of these open events in like a while. I mean, I went to Gowanus. I think that was the last one I've been to. So it was definitely cool to get be back here, um, get back on the podium. Um, and I hope to be at more events like these soon. I want to attend a lot of open competitions this year, but got to prepare for these big competitions for sure, like open nationals, team trials, always something coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And like for you. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot on the schedule, a lot to balance. Go ahead, Basim. I hate this delay. <laughs> no, like, We're going to fix it next say, time. <laughs> just like two things. Like I, I, we missed you. Like, I mean, I, it was like, where is Sienna? <clears throat> it's like, Jojo yeah. just can't help the podium every time. We need someone <laughs> to knock her off the podium. Right. Um, and, and it was like, you know, so I spoke to your mom as I was watching your sister start to really just dominate the advanced um, categories. Yeah. Um, and then like, you know, like for climbers like you and, you know, it, it's, there is no season. Like, it's just all year climbing for you. You know, whether you're climbing in mm -hmm. the local circuit yeah. or you're climbing and like you, you did from team trials to the worlds and it's just like one. So like when it comes to that, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you're, you're always smiling, right? And like, no matter what, whether you're falling or whatever, like is, do you have this mm -hmm. inkling of like, this is so much pressure, so much of, of this, I, I can't do it anymore. Like, uh, you know, like where, where is your mental state right now when you start talking about all the competition, all the traveling, everything you're doing along with now, you know, like, you know, being, I guess you're a senior now, right? In high school. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, you know, climbing is a part of my lifestyle now. Like it's been a huge part of my life. I've been doing it for like 10 whole years. So that's pretty crazy. Um, mm -hmm. it's just something that I love to do. makes me happy. Um, I definitely feel a lot of pressure, especially at the bigger comps, but at these comps, my goal is to just have fun. I just want to have fun at this comp. I just came back from Worlds. Um, this is my first competition coming back, and I just wanted to have a good time. And you know, I didn't have to put too much pressure on myself. Yeah, that's great to hear. You know, it's, it the it really is a zero break season for people who are performing at mm -hmm. your level, and it's like I'm impressed by the mental resilience of people who can just like keep going like that for so mm -hmm. long, and like you know the. No, nobody would bring, would blame anybody for needing a break and like glad to hear that you were able to manage your time well enough and like be okay with stepping away from a few of them last year like that's great you know school is still important 
uh, I'm talking to my team kids. School is still important. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, so, you always the, need a balance. Definitely. And also, balance. like, making and, fun, making, um, making sure you have time for, like, other stuff, even if it's just hanging out with friends or just having a good time in general. Yeah, maybe taking a nap once in a while. Yeah, remember sleep? <laughs> God, I love sleep. Yeah. Um, the So, you know, I know, like, there's constant training on the docket. Um, Mm -hmm. is there anything at this point in the season for you that you're really prioritizing? I know you have worlds coming up or, uh, open nationals coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. October. Yes. Um, probably prioritizing that competition. So I don't know when the next open competition is coming up, but I'll probably try to go to those just to get a little more prepared, get in the competition mindset. And then definitely a lot of training at method for sure. Um, this is website. Balance it out with this. You can check huh? out at climbingnoise.com. Lists all of the huh. competitions across the nation. You can okay, go check yeah. that out. <laughs> I'll check that out for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, that's definitely helpful. Yeah, and so any competition you want to look for, everyone remember that, climbingnoise.com, uh, for okay. every, every every competition. And prizes and all that stuff is all in one place across the nation. Oh, that's but, pretty yeah, cool. That's, <laughs> Um, like, so when we talk about, um, just like, I, I know Tyler likes to talk about, you know, you're preparing for, you know, nationals or whatever, but, um, are, are, do you feel like you have, we, I, cause I, I watch you climb and I'm like, this, 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 no weaknesses. Right. So do you feel like there's like this, I, I need to improve on this, this area? Like what, where do you feel that Sienna could use some improvement when you talk about her climbing ability? Oh, for sure. I have weaknesses. Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint exactly what they are, but 100%. I I struggle a lot. Like, you say I don't, but always, (laughs) always do. Um, It's it's like an interesting conversation because, you know, I get to have these conversations with the the route setters before, you know, the finals. Like, oh, so-and-so registered and get an idea. And they use you know, who is registering as kind of a basis for how they're setting climbs uh, for mm-hmm. finals, right? And I'm like, well, I go, well, I go well, what can they do to stump Sienna? Like, you know, that's like, kind of like the thought, like when, yeah. when you're in there, I'm like, well, how, do, how are they going to keep this, you know, and it's a, it's an art form how they do it, but mm-hmm. I'm like, I wonder if they, they kind of, you know, spy and, and have an understanding for what you like and what you don't. Because like, mm-hmm. you know, for me, like watching, watching you climb, I don't really, really see a huge you know, weakness in your game. Yeah, I feel like the thing about me is like, I'm able to do dynamic, I'm able to do slab climbs, I'm able to do strength climbs. Like I have all the skills, but like sometimes they just don't come together. That's why it's like hard to pinpoint what my weakness exactly is. But like on specific climbs, I'll definitely have a lot of trouble and a lot of more trouble, a lot of trouble on things that people find really easily, especially like at Worlds, like barely got any points in semifinals, not a good round for me. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have some definitely learn what I need to work on specific movements. Well, that's cool to hear that like, you know, it's easy for people to watch people who are on the podium all the time and think that they're, you know, bulletproof, but um yeah, everybody has their yeah. uh we like to call it a challenge style or like different periods of time where they feel like they need to prioritize learning. Mm-hmm about different styles of movement like it's not always a clear cut like uh you know like this person is good at this and bad at this like it can be very uh i like to say like temperamental you know like your ability Mm -hmm. on different styles yeah um yeah i think slab is probably the style that makes me the most nervous though for sure because you never know what you're going to get with that like it could be a confusing type of slab problem or something just really balancing really awkward where I just feel like I can't stay on the wall. So slab is definitely a challenge for me. But sometimes I'll surprise myself and I'll like flash a slab climb at the end of the round and then get on the podium because of that. So you never know how competition will turn out. I think, you know, that might be a good place for us to start uh, like transitioning into a wrap up. We usually like to like leave some some space for people to plug whatever they have going on sponsor wise. Um, you know, we've got our own stuff that we'll that we'll talk about, but Sienna, like, who's uh, who's helping you get there? Oh, Beta Labs. Beta Labs is yeah. my sponsor. I love their I love their 
hip talk bag, the one with the um, clip. I know a lot of people like the buckets. I love the buckets too, but just for me, I always, I don't know, I always like having it on me, but I like having the bucket on the side for sure. They look really cool. The design is amazing. Um, I don't outdoor climb a lot, but I heard that they're really good for, they're like really, they're like weather resistant, really good for mm-hmm. rain. Um, and yeah, really thankful for everything Beta Labs has done for me and all their support. Yeah. Sure. Imagine watching this channel and not supporting Beta Labs. That would be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone loves Beta Labs. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. Beta Labs all the way. Um, awesome. Yeah, and um, definitely check out Beta Labs uh, if you guys don't know who they are. Uh, another big beta, Actually, we had three Beta Labs climbers on the podium, right? We had Josh, Austin, and yourself, right, Sienna? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Beta Labs all the way. So. They're supporting the mm-hmm. community, supporting the strong climbers, and yeah, the for, strongest in the Northeast. Strongest in the Northeast, yes, for for sure. Uh, but yeah, so thank. I mean, really, thank you so much for your for your time, Sienna. Like this is, uh, I can thank I'm, you for I'm, having I'm, me. It was so much fun. Yeah, I know. I really, yeah, really that was a lot of fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And I so I think what I want to do. So one of the other things that we are doing in the channel, and I actually just did one with Austin Hoyt. It's kind of like a um, more of a personal kind of chat, like when we start talking like a climbing session as well as um, just, you know, some talking back and forth. Did with Austin. Um, I also want to introduce some female climbers as well into it so we can start branching out. It's actually a pretty cool format. Um, it'll be dropping soon. Uh, maybe we can do one uh, with mm-hmm. you a little bit later. Just, you know, try not to make me look really, really weak on the wall um, when we do that. <laughs> um, and then, so, uh, definitely if you guys haven't seen the live stream at this point, like, I mean, get on it, go check out the live stream, uh, for sure. And just really watch some amazing climbers crushing it. First competition of the season for most folks. Uh, and of course, like I said, for, you know, climbers like Sienna and it, like, they, they don't really have a season. It's just climbing all year round. Uh, but so definitely check us out. If you like what we're doing here, when we're bringing our, our guests, definitely subscribe, like, comments let us know what you think um all those wonderful things uh, and you can see that coming down the line for us i don't remember the order of these but we are going to be live streaming vitals volume two so this is their second yeah um, competition I'm really excited about that uh which was really um really mm-hmm. cool so we didn't live stream it last year uh we recorded it and put it up they tried to do live streaming on their own didn't work out so well we're not going to get into that uh but now they've they've realized that Beta Breakers is the way to go. Um, we're also doing a live stream for the Boulder Fest, which is uh, Brooklyn Bouldering Project. Uh, so I know those two are on the docket as well as the lead competition at LIC. So movement in LIC as well. So those are, I think, the three that are currently up. More to come, of course, as more gyms start to figure out their schedule for the season. Uh, so definitely keep posted. And, um, yeah, don't forget, you know, like, so if you subscribe, you get all the notifications on all this. Every time we post, you get it. Uh, so definitely do that to, to keep informed. And, of course, thank you again, Tyler, hitting up from Europe, uh, <laughs> helping us out. And, Sienna, it's been a pleasure. Do this again for sure. Thank you. And thank you. And so we'll catch everyone on the next one. Later. Yeah.